let's see if we solve this problem or not. Not sure that we have. Oh yeah, there we go. Okay. All right, if anybody's joined, uh, I'm doing a live astrophotography session here in my front yard tonight. And uh, what you're seeing on the screen currently uh, is PHD2 auto guiding software. So this is, um, stands for push here dummy <laughs> of all things. And uh, that's the name of the software. And what this does is I have a uh, guide scope, so a small telescope attached to the main telescope. And it has a small webcam on the back. And that webcam is looking up at the sky. And the software is measuring the movement of the star that it's locked onto. And every time that star moves, it will send corrections to my go-to mount, so the computer-controlled mount. And it will correct the aim of the telescope so that uh, we get nice... Uh, pictures with long exposure times. The um, Earth is rotating and so uh, if you tried to do long exposures and just point at the sky and take uh, say on a normal tripod and turn that shutter on for say a minute you're gonna get star trails because the sky is, appears to be moving from your vantage point. So what I'm doing here is I'm running the guiding assistant in um, PhD and this is going to help me tune some settings, make sure I get my uh, guiding down. Um, looks like right now I'm tracking at about one arc second. Uh, that's pretty, pretty good. Um, so we'll go ahead and close this down. And I'm running a program called Backyard EOS for my camera software for my capture. And um, it comes with backyard red. It lets me turn that screen red so that I can keep some of my night vision. Uh, since I am out here on my front lawn, I'd like to see if anybody's kind of sneaking up on me. <laughs> um, so right now I'm just pointed at, uh, this is Altair. Um, nice bright star in the sky, and I've focused my camera. So we'll go over here to uh, Backyard EOS. This is the image capturing software. and. Uh, as you can see here, uh, we've captured a, a few images here. I was doing some testing earlier uh, for ISO settings. Um, I found that uh, my camera, the 70D, the um, normal recommended uh, ISO settings for Canon cameras seems to be, everybody seems to default to ISO 1600. And when I was looking at the data, I noticed that for the 70D, the graph drops off a little faster after ISO 400. So I thought tonight maybe what I would do is try a nebula and um, try a lower ISO setting of 400 and uh, try really long exposure time and see if that helps me out with my images. Uh, for some reason at ISO 1600 I seem to be having a lot of Im problems with noise in the image and it's getting harder and harder to process it out. So I'm not sure what that's about but uh, Let's see what happens here. So, looks like we're guiding pretty good. Uh, so, that's good. So, now we got to pick a target. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop guiding so that we can slew them out. I'll minimize PhD. And I'm going to pull up Stellarium. And I love Stellarium. This is a free program that anybody can go download. And it's a planetarium program, so I'm just using the mouse to kind of slew around the sky. I've gone down here, I've turned on deep sky objects. And what's really nice is there's an add-on type program called Stellarium Scope. So if you have a go-to mount telescope, you can actually use Stellarium to point your scope um, to something, some object in the night sky. So in my location where we're at right now, I've got to the north there is a pretty bright spotlight pointed up into the sky. I do have a uh, filter on my camera. It's a light pollution filter. It's uh, the semi-apo filter from, uh, I'm not going to pronounce this right, Bader, Bader, B-A-A-D-E-R. 
Uh, you probably won't be able to read that in the camera since it's so dark out here, but uh, shout out to them for the semi-APO filter. This thing is amazing. I've taken just a couple of quick images out here in the front yard with it, and I'm really happy with it. So given that we have that spotlight, and currently, I'm just looking to see, so currently that spotlight's kind of doing this right here. So let's see what we have here. We have M81. That's a nice galaxy. M81, M82 right next to each other. Uh, I've done a few of those before. Let's look for something a little higher in the sky. Maybe what do we have here? Fireworks galaxy. Um, Oh, yeah, if we go to the left here a little bit. Uh, the Heart Nebula may be a little low in the sky. You know what I was thinking about here? Let's try the east. Oh, where are you at tonight? Toward the east. So, you're going to be behind a tree for me. So... I can be able to, well, hmm. well, let's try it. Center that in the view. And we're going to slew the telescope over. Oh, we might get lucky here. Let's take a look. Oh, look at that. We have uh, a satellite going through. That's kind of neat. Okay, let's center that. So this is the uh, what we're hoping to look at. So let's minimize that down. Bring up backyard. Bring up Astro Tortilla, and let's uh, make him. So <coughs> Astro Tortilla. This is plate solving software, and what this is going to do is going to take an image using my uh, camera, my Canon camera, and. Uh, it's going to take an exposure, and it's going to take that exposure. It's going to run it against uh, a bunch of different uh, catalogs of stars, a database essentially, and it's going to look and see. Oh, it looks like the mount was still slowing a little bit. Let's see if it uh, is able to resolve anything off of that image. We might have to have it take another image. And I apologize if there's any noise or anything moving my head around with this uh, headset and all. It's Oh, good. It was able to figure out where it was. It's re-slewing. Um, yeah, I'm just out in my front yard. You know, uh, I'm not going to be out too long. I got to have to go to work tomorrow. Um, but I thought, you know, people might be interested in seeing a, a live astrophotography session. Uh, let's take a look and see what it takes to get some of these images. So we're going to let Astro Tortilla do its thing and uh, take a few more images. So is tracking turned off? Yeah, tracking turned off. Sidereal is on. Okay. So there's tracking. Uh, for those curious, I use uh, Pole Master, which is a uh, small camera that goes on the polar scope to do the mount alignment and uh, really makes polar alignment uh, quick and easy. So, okay, good. Looks like we're all solved. So, given that, we're going to start up guiding again. And we'll have it start looping exposures. And I'm looking over at the light on the back of the uh, camera for that. And it is blinking, so it's taking some images. There we go. And we're going to tell it to auto select a guide star. Looks like it picked one up. Good signal to noise ratio. And let's start guiding. And let's clear these out so I can see what's going on better. And it's always uh, always takes a few seconds to get that going. that's starting up, I am going to 
connect up here, see how it's looking. Okay, good. <coughs> okay, it looks like we're guiding. Give it a few, uh, we'll give it a little bit here to settle down. Make sure it's gonna do all right. Let's take a look at the trend lines. Kind of all over the place. Let's we'll let it settle down. Wow, really trying to bring the right ascension back here. Hmm. There we go. Uh, it's not really liking that guide star very well, is it? The thing might have some clouds moving through. It's supposed to be a nice clear night tonight. I don't see any. But that doesn't preclude the possibility, obviously. Let's uh, adjust the exposure on that camera just a bit. You know, I really don't like the guide star it's selected. I'm thinking maybe I'll pick one manually here. Um, yeah, it went from 500 signal to noise ratio to 140. So let's stop guiding. We're going to clear these settings out. And let's see. Whoops see if this time if we tell it to auto select the guide star see if it picks a better one not too bad let's uh, give it a shot on this one let's see how we do I'm gonna turn uh, red down here for a little bit okay that's looking pretty good we're on auto exposures this run for a minute. While that's starting up, check the chat. Don't see any chats in there. Wow, what is going on tonight? Let's take a look at the uh, calibration data. So I recalibrated this earlier. Seems to be all right. Well, let's give this a minute to settle. Let's see how we do. I'd like to see this under, or right around a minute and a half instead of, uh, or I'm sorry, a second and a half instead of two. Let's take a look at the trend lines. Looks like it's coming back in line a little bit. See, we're settling down now. That error's uh, going down. There we go. We're under an arc second now. Seems to be smoothing out a little bit. All right. So now that the guiding's running pretty well, why don't we go through and do a test exposure? And um, let's do 
120 seconds at uh, we'll go ISO 400 and we'll do uh, we're pointed at the East Vail Nebula oops ISO 400 and let's take a preview test shot Obviously, this is a hobby of patience. Um, you don't get instant results. You uh, come out, stay out all night sometimes, taking exposures for two, three, four hours on the same target. Um, take all that data, take it back to some computer programs. Uh, there's Deep Sky Stacker, PixInsight, um, star tools, um, various different imaging process, processing software that uh, you need to use in order to get the, uh, the best quality images out of your data. And um, so essentially astrophotography is sort of a, uh, a meld between uh, art and science. And uh, what you're really doing is, is capturing data in your camera, uh, converting that into an image, and then um, trying to make the uh, best interpretation of that data um, that you can. So definitely not a, uh, a hobby for quick uh, rewards. So I'm going to go ahead and let this uh, count down. I'm going to stop talking. <laughs> and uh, you know, if anybody has any questions, uh, please you know feel free to throw something in the chat. Uh, hit me up on uh, Twitter. Uh, I'm doing this session live. Uh, and if you have any questions, let me know. All right, so we have our two-minute exposure, and what I'm looking for at the moment is nice round stars. So we're going to zoom in nice and tight. We're at uh, over f almost there. We go 600% zoom, and these stars are pretty round. That's nice. So we'll pop that back out. One nice thing about backyard EOS. If you look super close, and uh, you know, with the uh, the streaming, you're probably not picking this up. You're probably just seeing some bright dots on this screen. If um, you look real close in here, you see some little wispy uh, uh, clouds, and you can just barely make it out. And that's our target. That's what we're looking for. So what I can do over here in the top right is I can adjust our settings a little bit and it's going to look a little funny but there you go you can make out a little red a little blue so here's our nebula and it's uh, kind of in the um, top right side of the image um, it's sort of the edge so if we go back here to Stellarium and zoom in a little bit you can see that uh, here's what we're looking at in my scope and uh, he's kind of up here in the top right like this, right? So we're not really getting the whole picture. So what I'm going to do to get us a little bit better uh, composition is I'm going to pick just this star here. I'm going to center him in Stellarium. I'm going to re, re slew the scope over here. Okay, it slewed pretty quick. And my guiding is probably all mad at me. Yep, that the scope started slewing. Sorry, guiding. So we'll clear that out, clear that out, and we'll come back to you in a second. We'll go back to our Astro Tortilla, and we're going to capture and solve, and we're going to make sure that we're actually centered on the star that I picked in Stellarium. So it's going <coughs> to, it meaning Astro Tortilla, is going to take a uh, exposure, five-second exposure at a high ISO, and 
here's that exposure and you can see the nebula here moved see it was in the top right now it's over here in the left so I think we're gonna get more of it let's see if Astro Tortilla is able to extract sources to figure out where it's at um, so you can see here it's looking through its indexes to see if it matches up any of the sources that are found Just another hair here down to the bottom right, or bottom uh, left uh, of the image. So let's see if Astro Tortilla is sad. Really dead on center. Where we want to be. Take our test shot exposure. And that means we're going to be sitting here for another two minutes waiting for the camera to finish collecting data. So with that, I'm going to take a look in Stellarium while we've got a couple of minutes. And what we might do, we might uh, Come in here just a little closer, pick one of these stars in here so we get more of a centered view. And uh, one of the things about this telescope, um, uh, if you're interested, it's an Explorer Scientific ED127. Uh, the 127 for 127 millimeters, I believe. Uh, equates to a five inch uh, aperture so that's five inches across in the front of the tell so there's a five inch lens and actually this one is a uh, what they call a triplet so there's three lenses uh, with a little space in between them and each one of those focuses uh, the light um, and so at the back of the telescope so this is a refractor style telescope is where the camera is and so those three lenses are focusing all that light, gathering it all, focusing it to the camera sensor, and we're capturing all that data uh, on the camera sensor. I'm trying to figure out what that spotlight is. <laughs> it's kind of annoying when you're uh, trying to image, but... That's uh, what you have to put up with as an astrophotographer. There's plenty of light pollution out there, especially when you live near a big city. Um, you know, there's uh, awareness for all kinds of different pollution, and uh, light pollution is definitely one of them. All right, so I forgot to turn guiding on, obviously. And um, we can see some wisps of the nebula down here in the bottom left. So. Not not happy with that. It's uh, probably a good thing I didn't turn guiding on yet because uh, I'm not really happy with that composition uh, of that image. So let's go back to Stellarium. And I want to put the scope a lot closer to it. So we'll center that. We'll center it over. And we'll use Astro Tortilla again as soon as the mount has told it that it's done slewing. And we'll just repeat this procedure again. So I'm going to go ahead and mute the microphone. I hear a car coming down, and uh, I'll be back here in a minute.
Alright, that car finally went away. So, you know, let's uh, try auto selecting the star. Let's see what he comes up with. He, can't, he picked that one. And, um, you know, I don't know that I'm super happy with that particular guide star. Um, it's got a good signal of noise, so let's go ahead and give it a shot here. We'll go ahead and tell it to start tracking. And so we're locked onto this guide star here. Let's see how we do. So we've started tracking. Car coming through. All right, we're going to try manually setting the camera to two-second exposures for the guide scope here and see if that has much, if any, effect. Um, guiding is uh, kind of all over the place if you're looking at the graph here. See if we can settle this down any. Okay, we can see here the software is making corrections, sending corrections to the mount, and it's bringing it back on target and overcorrected a little bit. So maybe what we need to do is uh, adjust this a little bit this hysteresis setting so this setting if you look at the tooltip it's how much of history of the previous guide pulses should be applied so uh, it helps dampen the uh, inputs just a little bit helps keep your mount from working too hard uh, and then you end up with this uh, guiding that's just way all over the place Now this mount's not, uh, this is an Orion Atlas mount that I bought used. And it turned out when I bought this mount, I bought it from a website called Cloudy Nights. Uh, there's a forum for uh, astronomers, amateur astronomers. And there's a, uh, a section on there for uh, classified ads. And I found somebody selling it. It was uh, advertised as being pretty much brand new. Only used a couple of times, set up in an office, and not really used much. And... Uh, Got a car coming through here, so hang on a sec. Okay. And uh, anyway, so got the mount, and at first it would just not track hardly at all. Every about five to seven minutes it would drop out really bad, finally come back, and I would also, maximum I'd get maybe about a five minute exposure if I was lucky before it dropped out. So I uh, went through, took the mount apart, found out that there was a couple of beads of sandblasting material inside of one of the gears. So I got that all cleaned out, uh, 
re-greased the whole thing in, in some white lithium grease, got it all set up real nice, and uh, finally was able to get uh, decent guiding uh, down to right around about a, an arc second uh, on a good night. And um, uh, longest exposure so far uh, has been a 10 minute exposure. So I haven't really tried anything over that. I thought that was pretty good compared to for where I started out at. So um, we'll see how that goes. So, you know, I'm not really happy with this. Every now and again, uh, what I end up doing is we'll just stop the guiding. We'll clear this out. And what we'll do is we'll just pick our own guide star. So we'll pick uh, this guy here. And we'll start guiding on him. And he's got some good signal to noise ratio, about 360. And let's see how we do. So every now and again, just kind of clearing it out, picking a, a different guide star, letting it start up again. Uh, seems to kind of clear out a little of the uh, error. And uh, let's it get going again. There we go. It's bringing it back in. We're down under an arc second, so I'm not expecting that to stay, but uh, I'll take it for now. So let's go ahead and back over here, and we'll take ourselves another test shot to see if we can start getting some actual data. So that'll be nice. And uh, in case anybody's joined or is watching it uh, later on after we save this and, and uh, keep it up on the site, um, again, not a hobby for the impatient. This is definitely a hobby that is uh, teaching me lots and lots of patience. All right, so there we go. Let's reset that image. And um, so as you can see, as captured, the uh, data for the image resides mostly here on the right-hand side of the uh, chart. So this is a histogram for those into photography. And that's, uh, you know, you can think of this as kind of a chart of where all the different uh, data in the image is. And uh, so this is a pretty dark image. Um, for those not used to low light photography, it's uh, it takes a little getting used to. But uh, we'll just adjust this up a little bit. And there we go. So we have some very nice nebula. So I wonder if I got a hot pixel or something. Um, so there we go. Nice, nice nebula. Nice uh, in the frame real good. Uh, definitely some vignetting from the scope. Uh, I can even see a dust mode up here in the corner for uh, some dust on the lens. Here we'll zoom in. Uh, I don't know if you'll be able to make that out in the uh, in the stream or on the video, but uh, here around the mouse cursor you can see kind of a dark spot in the image. Uh, that's where some dust 
it's on the lens uh, or in the optical train somewhere. Uh, so I'm happy with this. And so why don't we do this? Let's see about, uh, it's about quarter, 20 to 10 local. I don't want to stay up too awful late, so let's uh, calculate here. Um, take some five minute exposures for an hour. Uh, so we want uh, 12 exposures. Oops. Come on. 12 exposures. Uh, duration of 300 seconds each, so that's five minutes. ISO 400. Um, no need to pause in between. Don't need a delay. Save to the DC. Light and start our image capture. So now for the next hour I'll just be uh, collecting this data and uh, so what I'm going to do uh, to go from here is we'll collect these what, what we call light frames. So this is with the uh, light coming in and hitting the sensor and, and uh, collecting all these files, this data. And um, while I'm thinking about it, let's double check our guiding, make sure it's still doing pretty well. It's under two arc seconds, so let's hope it stays there. And um, so we'll, we'll gather these light images, and then I'm going to gather some calibration frames after that. And what I mean is um, you take bias frames, dark frames, and flat frames ideally. Uh, I don't have the ability to take flat frames right now. Um, there's a couple of different methods. Uh, probably the most popular is t-shirt method. You stretch a white t-shirt over the end of the telescope and then you have a, a nice even light source like a light box, LED panel, something like that. Uh, I don't yet have an LED panel to put on it and uh, my iPad is not the big one so it's not big enough to put uh, over the telescope there uh, to, to give it a nice even light source. So I have to figure something else out or make a, a flat box they call it. You make a box and put some LEDs in it and a uh, diffusing material in there to make a nice even field to make your flat frames. Uh, but I can do the darks and the biases. And the darks are basically you take about 30 images at the same setting so uh, I have to take somewhere between 15 and 30 five minute exposures uh, in the camera. And then the bias frames are you set the camera uh, for the fastest um, shutter speed that it can possibly go and what you're really doing is these uh, are taken by the stacking software and uh, it takes out any uh, well not any of but it takes out some of the uh, noise uh, read noise image noise uh, from the camera sensor itself and the electronics inside the camera can generate some noise in the image so these calibration frames help take some of that out when you stack the images together so again, I'm taking about an hour's worth of light frames. I'm going to uh, take these five minute exposures for an hour. I'm going to put them into some image processing software later, stack them all together, and then uh, put them in star tools, uh, which is my, uh, right now, my choice for uh, image processing. And then we'll uh, take a look at the completed image, probably sometime uh, tomorrow or later in the week. Uh, usually what I do is gather all this data uh, and then in couple of days or whenever I have some time uh, off from work that uh, I'll go through and, and process it. Um, so probably what I'll do is just record that offline instead of doing live stream. It's uh, kind of boring. <laughs> but uh, I'll do some recording of, of the processing piece and uh, show that as well. Um, so I don't see anything in the chat tonight. So that's fine. Um, hopefully you'll be able to join us next time for a live imaging session like this. I uh, plan to do some more of these from my front yard, uh, especially on nights like tonight where it's nice and clear and it's a nice night and I'm not too cold, not too hot. So, um, Thanks for watching. Appreciate it. Really appreciate that uh, like and uh, subscribe button uh, clicks. Um, and if you want to see more astrophotography videos please you know leave me a comment uh, shoot me a note on Twitter and I'd be happy to, to uh, try and accommodate uh, especially if you have any suggestions for some of the targets in the northern sky from uh, the northern hemisphere thanks for joining folks <laughs>